your dancing shoes, it's Bess Daly. She's the bee's knees. It's Ashley Dee. And 13 captain, John Richardson. And facing them tonight, News Flash. It's Christian Guru Murphy. From Beer to Eternity, it's Joe Wilkinson. And their team captain, Sean Lock. Now, welcome your host, Jimmy Pop. Hello and welcome to 8 out of 10 Cats Uncut, a show all about opinion polls, surveys and statistics. Did you know, for example, 10% of British people let their pets sleep in their bed. There's nothing more relaxing than waking up in the night to feel the weight of your dog on your chest, to feel his fur, hear his gentle panting, and sense his eyes staring at you in the darkness. <laughs> Until you realise, hang on a minute, I haven't got a dog. 54% <laughs> of teenagers never go to the cinema. Really? Where do they make their phone calls? <laughs> and 25% of Brits rate themselves 10 out of 10 in the bedroom. I'd give myself 9.9 .9 because I fell over on the dismount. <laughs> right, let's get started. <laughs> what are you talking about? That's the name of our first round. It's our panellist's job to guess the British public's top five most popular talking points. Johnstein, what do you think people have been talking about this week? I don't really talk to people. <laughs> I tend to move away when we I... We put two girls on your team this week because we thought it would force you to talk to girls. OK. Hey. Oh, all right, John. Yeah. <laughs> girls. Done. <laughs> 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 uh, what about uh, Tesco saying that we're throwing away, is it two-thirds of our food oh, that we phenomenal. buy? So much wasted food. Yeah, well, specifically, it's the bagged salad. They reckon two-thirds of it goes in the bin. Tess, you waste any food? Well, I try not to, but, yeah, hands up. I'm guilty of occasionally throwing away a bag of salad that's gone past its sell by date. You've got kids, give it to them. Well, I, I do. <laughs> I whatever what whatever I you and Vernon don't have, I, throw I, to them. I <laughs> and if it's not them, it's the dog, but occasionally you do find yourself throwing stuff away, don't you? The thing is the labelling, isn't it? Because they say bag, salad, mixed leaves, but actually it's not, that's not accurate, is it? It should be mixed leaves stroke compost. <laughs> that's what it is. You're basically buying a bag of compost. Because sometimes, you know, it's gone off by the time you got it home. <laughs> I go through red lights just to get the food home. <laughs> 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 I'm a picnic in the car park. I think there's a smell test where we all believe the best before day, just give it a sniff. If you're not sick in your mouth, it's fine. <laughs> yeah. It seems like a lot of waste, two thirds of everything you eat, but I thought about it, it's true, because I've got an example of like, if I'm eating a packet of three Scotch eggs, I'll eat one and throw the other two at cyclists. You've really put that in terms everyone can relate to. <laughs> I waste so little, I went on holiday and took some Nurofen, because you can never be too prepared on a holiday, can you? No, John. And when I got back, I saw that one of the Nurofen had popped out of the little uh, metal thing they're in, and I didn't want to waste it, so I ate it. <laughs> <laughs> didn't even have a headache. Just thought, I'm not putting that in the bin. Then I had to get shit-faced just to get the benefit out of it. <laughs> I hate food waste. I think it's the worst thing in the world. I'd eat things off the floor just to make sure there's no waste. <laughs> I also hate mice. And one time, my flatmate, to catch a mice for me while I was asleep, left some peanut butter by the toaster with rat poison on it <laughs> and a spoon. <laughs> and I came downstairs the next morning and was like, oh, waste not, want not, oh. <laughs> I had to go to hospital and get my stomach pumped. <laughs> it shows how much I hate food waste and also how easy I'd be to trap. Uh, <laughs> but it's... <laughs> Christian, do you waste food? I do waste food. I'm really bad. I'm a bit obsessive about the dates. So I'm always the one who, who looks at the date and it says it runs out on the 23rd, so I can't eat it. Because if it's off, then I might want to be sick or something. So, Christian, um... and you've been reading the news and all these stories about, you know, conspiracies too long. <laughs> years ago, there was a flood in Honduras and a woman was in a tree giving birth to a baby. A helicopter came along and pulled her out of the tree as she gave birth to the baby and she was put into the helicopter with the umbilical cord still attached and they both survived. Your bag salad isn't going to kill you. <laughs> I 
feel that story might have been a sledgehammer to crack yeah. a nut there, really. <laughs> there was a helicopter and a flood in Honduras to get him to eat some salad. <laughs> a bad bag of salad might make you rush the news, won't it? Well, I've, got, feeling, a very, yeah. I've got a weak stomach, and reading the news on a weak stomach is not good. No. No. My sister once had to throw up... She's a newsreader as well, and she had to throw up in between the stories. So she would do an intro and then go... <laughs> and then carry on, you know. Was it a particularly gory it, story? There was, no, <laughs> there was nobody to relieve her. Madonna has a new video out where she tries to be sexy. <laughs> <laughs> John, do you read the best before dates? Do you, do you adhere to them? No, no. Oh. I've, got, I've got pesto in my fridge that, that Assad wouldn't fire at insurgents. I don't even monkey, so I'm fine. I've got, I've got a cast iron stomach. Yeah. The problem is, we have a generation growing up now who have never seen Ready Steady Cook. So they don't know how to make a meal out of a Mars bar, a red pepper and a stock cube. <laughs> <laughs> so they open the cupboards and everything's a meal anyway and they just go, oh, I've got nothing in. Ainsley Arrett would have turned that into a gourmet feast and been delightful company in the meantime. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> OK, let's have a look and see what's up there. Yes, Tesco has revealed the extent of food wastage in the country. According to the survey, 53% of food in this country goes to waste. The rest goes to hips and bums. Right, girls? <laughs> uh, Sean Steen, what else have the nation been talking about? Uh, Alex Ferguson has written a book. He's basically got a few things off his chest about various players... Did you, find, did you think it was controversial? I see people sort of having a go at him, saying, oh, why is he washing his dirty laundry in public? But imagine managing footballers for that many years. We all know what monumental tossers they are. <laughs> <laughs> imagine just having to manage 22, 25 of those for 26 I years. Can't believe you... be just, I can't believe he just hasn't just shot himself one day. I can't believe he can get those guys on a bus. It must be like <laughs> trying to herd cats. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, yeah, we have to be there by two. Honestly, there's a kick and a whistle. <laughs> I thought what was interesting is the cover. His nose isn't red. <laughs> it's the one photograph where his nose isn't red. You got a picture of him? Here's a, here's a picture. There he is. Yeah. Yeah, look at his nose, it's brilliant. That's his home nose. That's what he wears to the United home games. <laughs> Someone should have told him to hold it a bit higher. That looks like his penis is a tiny little Alex Ferguson. <laughs> <laughs> he called his My Autobiography, which isn't it's quite a lazy title. The only way it could have been shitter if it was just called Book. <laughs> The most disgusting line in his book was the revelation that the hardest part of Roy Keane's body is his tongue. I don't want to know how he found that out. <laughs> but what a disgusting image that is. That's a man who's broken legs. What can he do with his tongue? My <laughs> God. He can break hearts. <laughs> I was a bit gutted it came out this week, uh, if I'm honest, because I, um, I released my autobiography this week as well. Was it out this week? Yeah, it's called, um, it's called Sex Panther. <laughs> To be honest with you, it's mainly about panthers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's mainly Some pictures. great pictures in there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's a couple with my top on. <laughs> <laughs> Can't find it. Morrissey's got one out as well. Morrissey's got one out. Yep. Yeah. I like to read them in tandem. I read a line of Fergie's <laughs> and a line of Morrissey's. <laughs> so he goes, I wept for days when I realised my bicycle would one day rust. <laughs> Rooney is an asshole. <laughs> 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 OK, let's have a look and see if Alex Ferguson's up there. Yes, Alex Ferguson's autobiography was released this week. In the book, Ferguson is scathing about David Beckham, Roy Keane and Wayne Rooney. If that lot ever learn to read, they'll be livid. <laughs> <laughs> OK, John Steen, what do you think the nation should be talking about? <laughs> Are you going to hug him? Strictly, strictly, strictly come dancing. Oh, it'd be great in Christmas charades. <laughs> You've never seen a faffa fool? No, we're not. <laughs> <laughs> people are talking about strictly, of course, aren't they? Of course they are. Because people are dancing and it's nice. 
<laughs> tires out the mums, doesn't it? A lot of dancing. You know, like kids, you send them to the park so they sleep. That's for mums and nanas, isn't it, Strictly? They get all excited and they go, oh, she'll sleep tonight. <laughs> 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 There's a little bit of something for everyone, isn't there? There's like the the reality TV element for the twenty year olds and for the thirty year olds as a celebrity thing and then for the nanas there's live music. Well let's not forget there's a lot of stuff for the dads. And for the dads, yeah. <laughs> so, so who's Vanessa Feltz for? <laughs> I'm always fascinated by Britain's refusal to let Bruce Forsyth go. I mean, he's just like Britain's Nelson Mandela. They're <laughs> gonna he be... is our Nelson Mandela. He yeah. is. They're going to be wheeling that man out in 20 years' time and going, what was that, Bruce? Was that a joke? Tap once for yes and tap twice for no. <laughs> <laughs> is it true, Tess, that they've told men to cover up? Have they done that? Oh, Ben, last week. Oh, was you... it? Ben, when you did the samba. Well, it... no, because the rumours were he's going to have a bare chest, and I'm sure further down the line, Ladies and gents, he will have a bare chest. Oh, my God, you heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> it is frustrating, though, not that they can't take their tops off, isn't it? Yeah. Quite frustrating. <laughs> just think it's a shame. Like, I find it frustrating. Like, I'm not allowed to go bottomless on this show. <laughs> they make me wear my trousers and pants even though I'm behind a desk. What's the point? <laughs> it's health and safety we've been through this. <laughs> Christian, would you ever go on Strictly? I, I have been asked, um... It's basically middle class porn, isn't it? That strictly come down to this point, I can tell. I mean, it's, like... <laughs> it's the job of the female newsreaders to sort of bounce around to entertain the bloke. Like your sister. And <laughs> what this is. <laughs> <laughs> what I find particularly annoying about Strictly is that if you are a camp man, you are allowed to be ruder than a man who is not camp. For example, if I were to watch Rachel Riley dance and I were to say, your bottom looked like a sack of potatoes there and, frankly, it made me sick, <laughs> there'd be complaints. But if I were a camp man like Bruno and, your bottom looked like sack of potatoes, you know... <laughs> 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 Thank you. OK, let's have a look and see if it's up there. <laughs> yes, yeah, Strictly Come Dancing continues. One of the celebrities, Patrick Robinson, is from Casualty. His dance starts well, but halfway through he starts climbing a stepladder to hang Christmas lights over a bath, and you think this isn't going to end well. <laughs> <laughs> We're still trying to guess the most talked about things this week. Sean's team. The, the thrilling uh, climax to the uh, Great British Bake Off. <laughs> yeah. Or, as I like to call it, Britain's Got Trifle. <laughs> <laughs> um, Did you watch it, Sean? No. <laughs> Watch out of any kind of, uh, you know, I don't have a problem with it, any issue with it. Just didn't happen to watch it. I was a bit disappointed by the winning pie. This is a pie. <laughs> <laughs> what, what were you hoping? Well, something a bit special. Like, I don't know, pie with Wi Fi. <laughs> I can't do that. Bullshit. <laughs> there were people who called Ruby, who was in the final, a filthy slag. <laughs> I mean, to get into the habit of calling cake makers a filthy slag. Is dangerous because most of them are in their seventies. <laughs> <laughs> I'll swear at a cake if a cake is really nice. I might go, "Oh, you dirty bastard!" <laughs> you never shouted at a baker before. No, I don't think so. Just going, you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't watch it an awful lot, but I do see Mary Berry a lot because she lives very close to me. So I bump into her at the local supermarket, which is brilliant because I get to look in a trolley in a basket. Is she buying Mr. Kipling? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Bet she is. No, but interestingly enough, we've got a local um, frozen food shop. Allegedly, she goes in and buys a, a pre cooked brownie tray bake. <laughs> that filthy slag! <laughs> I feel like I'm in a, at a bus stop in Buckinghamshire. <laughs> <laughs> you see her, she thinks she's all that, she buys pre made. <laughs> Krishnan, did you did you partake? Uh, well, it's a bit like Breaking Bad, um, the, the the great the great Bake Off. The idea of it is is a bit ludicrous, and you wouldn't want to watch it. But then, if you catch it, it's amazing, and you learn a lot, and it's quite addictive. <laughs> I would rather see the kind of shit bakers, you know, like you know, at the start of X Factor when they show the really deluded. <laughs> <laughs> 
crazy ones yeah, that can't really do it. I want to see the guy that baked a pie with, like, a lever arch file in it. Or, <laughs> like, decorate a cake with his own hair. That's what I want to see. <laughs> it lashes out when he doesn't get through. <laughs> what you're saying is you want to be on the show. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> OK, let's have a look at Antifa's up there. Yeah. Yes, the number one story. Yes, the Great British Bake Off was the most talked about thing this week. Bake Off's not been a great success in America, of course, over there. It's a dieting show. <laughs> OK, fingers on buzzers. One more thing still to get. What do you think? Uh, I think, I think uh, it's maybe heat and energy. There's all these new nuclear plants that they're uh, launching to because the heat has gone up 10%. And the only people who are going to win from that are the perverts in the strip clubs because they're going to get more dance for their dollar now because the strippers will be like, oh, God, take off my woolly hat. <laughs> take off my big coat. It'll go on for an extra 20 minutes before they get to the nipple tassels. <laughs> I don't think the first yeah, bit is really what the men are there for. Really? <laughs> I, don't, I don't think the bobble hat bit they're enjoying. Do you go to the loo? <laughs> I don't go <laughs> anywhere. Where's the magic on? Where's the magic on that you can't start with the hat? I love, I love your idea of a strip club where you where the girl comes in with a hat and a coat. <laughs> Everyone here? Right, I'll get myself ready. <laughs> right, back to, back to nuclear power. John. Well, there's going to be no energy left, so we're going to have to build some more nuclear power plants, is what's happening, because... Well, basically, because we've all come weak. I like the cold. I like a little bit of... It's romantic, isn't it, the cold? <laughs> But to, or to fill the uh, deficit from the uh, energy company's prices going up and up and up, mm -hmm. we're going to build nuclear power stations. It's a non-renewable source of energy, so it has to go up, because we can't, we can't keep drawing from the Earth forever, guys. Yeah, well, we can to a while we're alive. Um, <laughs> <laughs> which is the main issue on the table at the moment. What? I think what we should do is all refuse to pay our energy bills. If everyone did it, like, in a mass disobedience... Just that woman and you, yeah. it sounds like. <laughs> Once you've got two, she's only you've got clapping four. her hands to stay warm. She's like, oh. just, just everybody, just choose a quarter. We just choose one quarter, and everyone just says, no, sorry, we're not. Because there, there's six energy companies, and it's a cartel, really. There's no difference. Yeah. And then what they need to do is people generally need to have like some kind of civil disobedience. I'm trying to be like the uh, utility Gandhi. That's who I see myself <laughs> as. <laughs> Everybody just says, no, we're not paying it. And that quarter, you must know... Because they can't cut everybody off. They get their energy from Russia, though, so it'll be the Russians who just turn the tap off. You just go, you don't pay for gas, you don't get gas. <laughs> <laughs> I put the shoulder laugh in just because I thought I made him too evil. <laughs> <laughs> They're putting it in Somerset, which is incredible, because Somerset has about five years' worth of energy from burning dead badgers. <laughs> just pile them all up. They just set fire to the badges. They could keep toasting. Well, warm don't for shoot the badges. Minutes. Put the badges in a, in like a hamster wheel. Get them working. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, you're 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 probably an expert on this. I would imagine. What do you think about nuclear power? Well, I'm not. Yeah, I know we need more energy, but I'm not really bothered about electricity because I I quite like sitting in the dark. <laughs> and I um I own a pair of night vision goggles. <laughs> so I'm quite happy. What happens with night vision goggles if you wear them in the day? Uh, it hurts real bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was wearing them, I opened the curtains, didn't realise eight in the morning, lost one eye. <laughs> okay, I can tell you it's not one of the most talked about things this week, but the nuclear power station will be built at Hinkley Point, or as it will be known in five years, the Forbidden Zone. <laughs> Fingers on buzzers, one more thing to get. Go on. Uh, it's the christening of the royal baby. Yeah. Uh, Exciting, wasn't it? Ah! Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Christened him his official title, which is Prince George at Asda. <laughs> <laughs> so they're in touch with common people. Yeah. Would um, you like to be asked to be one of the, the godparents? I think um, would, would have been a tough choice for them. But... I think it'd be a very difficult choice for everybody involved. <laughs> I think it's wise that uh, we discussed it and it was agreed that for both parties, <laughs> it wasn't going to work out. <laughs> And that's why Joe got the job. <laughs> I'm quite liberal about these things in the church, though. I mean, I, I'm a godfather to uh, someone, and I said, they, when they asked me, I said, but I'm not a Christian. And they said, don't worry, just come and meet the vicar. And I said to the vicar, well, obviously, I'm not Christian. And, and he said, don't, don't worry. When, when I just say, you See, know, none of us you... are. <laughs> 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 sorry, sorry, carry on. Well, you basically told me to lie. He said, you know, when, when, when they ask you the question, you know, will you bring this child up in the traditional whatever it is, just say yes. It's fine. <laughs> uh, Joe, you... I was saying the big scandal was that um, 
some of the royals didn't get invited. I was like, that's, that's good. Chris thinks a shit. <laughs> there totally is no disco, you can't smoke. You have to get the gravy stains off your suit. It, this is a grey suit, it's just covered in gravy. <laughs> He didn't look very happy, though, did he, in the photographs, the official pictures of Baby George? I think we've got a photo. We've got George. an official photo. Have we? Look. Look at that. He's look got he's tentacles. Wearing... Oh, look. It's <laughs> <laughs> only his second ever public appearance and he's wearing a frock. The, these sort of things are the only days where weirdos get called well-wishers. <laughs> a very good point well made, yeah. You can sort of go out and about in London oh, and no yeah, one bats an eyelid. I'm free as a bird that day. <laughs> I can wave at babies and no-one arrests me. <laughs> I never care about other people's christening. I have just come from St James's Palace, actually, for, um, from here. I was at a royal reception um, with Prince Charles and Camilla. What were you doing at a royal reception? <laughs> no, they, they're going, on, they're going off to, to India and Sri Lanka <laughs> and they wanted to get in the mood, so they invited some British darkies. And, um... <laughs> what now? <laughs> and, but sorry, they're, so they're going to... I'm so glad you said it, not me. <laughs> <laughs> They're going where, sorry? They're, they're, going... Go, they're going to India and Sri Lanka. And they Sri invited Lanka you round to kind of get... Yeah, me and a few friends. Get in the mood, <laughs> get some travel tips. <laughs> We've got a picture of you there. Let's have a look. There you are. Oh, gosh. That Take was quick. Um, well, they're pictures, they're just... You can email them. <laughs> <laughs> We'd have to go into Slappy Snaps to get it developed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, well, there I am, um, sucking up to Camilla. What did you talk to Camilla about? Uh, I talked to her about something really serious. We are both patrons of the same charity. Oh. So I talked to her about that. It won't get reported as a serious conversation. Whatever the royals say, in the papers they put, they quipped, or they... as if they're these <laughs> piss-funny... <laughs> <laughs> the front page of the paper said, it's the first time the baby's been quiet today, joked William. <laughs> 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 it's not a joke, is it? That is a statement. That's <laughs> just a fact. He was noisy, and now he's not noisy. <laughs> you cannot tell these people they're funny. They get enough, they get driven everywhere and carried in gold carriages. They need an honest appraisal, at least, of their comic talent. <laughs> to be told, fine what you do, but that's a shit joke. <laughs> OK, let's see if George is up there. Yes, it was Prince George's christening this week. Sadly, DNA tests have revealed Prince George actually belongs to a Romany gypsy couple from Greece. <laughs> so, those were the most talked about things this week. But in other news, the German Chancellor, Angela Merkel, has accused the American Secret Service of bugging her phone. I'm not being funny, but if history's taught us anything, it's keeping an eye on the Germans, never a bad idea. <laughs> A cat in a Moldovian prison has been caught smuggling cannabis into inmates. Uh, the cat has now been sentenced to death, which means it can only do it eight more times. <laughs> and the Vatican has announced it's forming its very own cricket team. They should be good because pretty much every Catholic priest can be described as not out. <laughs> yeah. So at the end of that round, Sean, Joe and Christian have three points. John, Tess and Ashling have two points. <laughs> Our next round is Pick of the Polls. John, Tess, Ashling, pick a question. Can we have the robot, please? Of course you want the robot. A recent survey revealed 61% of people would be happy to shop at a fully automated store with no human interaction. So we asked our studio audience, would you rather be served by a machine or a human being? It's really annoying, isn't it, when you're in a supermarket and you use one of the, the automated tills and a light is flashing, it's either the DVD or a bottle of wine, and, you, you know, you need help. They never work, those things. You're supposed to pay for them before you I leave. Know. <laughs> I've lost it. I've lost it with them. I've just shouted at the machine. So I've swiped this loads of times, and I've just said, look, I've taken the chicken, OK? <laughs> Do your worst. The chicken's coming with me. It's like a hostage, so I walk out of the shop like this. Go. I'm having this chicken, OK? I've tried to pay. You won't take it. I'm going. <laughs> Drives me nuts. Yeah. Yeah, it is and then you swipe, nothing swipes, and then you got an apple, no sticker on it, just goes boop, and you go, what the...? <laughs> I'm getting your head. Uh, occasion occasionally, I like to put an unexpected item in a bag in area, just... <laughs> Just to hear a woman's voice. <laughs> 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 
Christian, would you, would you rather human interaction, Christian, or...? I... Uh, it depends what kind of mood I'm in. Generally, if, if the machine worked, I'd rather have a machine in a shop, but the machines don't work. It's like when you go to Heathrow, they've got the machine immigration thing, so that you can avoid the large queue, and then you queue up with the machine, and you put your passport on the machine, and the machine says, go and talk to a person. It doesn't work. <laughs> so, if the machines worked, fantastic, but they don't. I think they do. I'd rather have a machine, cos sometimes I'm buying stuff I do not want to have a conversation about. <laughs> And we just look at your basket and you go, well, we're not getting through this without a little quiz, are we? <laughs> <laughs> What's the worst combo of items you've, you've had to buy at a supermarket? It's more the reason I'm buying it. Once I had a dream about a cake. <laughs> <laughs> I had a dream about a cake. Our very own Martin Luther. A, <laughs> a set, yeah, I have a dream today. It's a set <laughs> rhubarb and custard flame. <laughs> It was rhubarb and custard, but the rhubarb had been cooked in rose water, so it had a slight Turkish delight flavour. It was <laughs> set round thing, and the custard set on top round a pastry. I wanted to bake it that afternoon. I didn't want to have to explain why a 25-year-old man was buying rose water and not booze. I should have been buying a four-pack of lager and a DVD. I was buying rose water and rhubarb. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want what I got, which was a cashier going, Oh, what are you doing with this, then? Because <laughs> you look mental if you go, I dreamed of a king. <laughs> <laughs> I'm genuinely intrigued now as to how that turned out. All, all I know is, you know, you said earlier you'd like to see an early round of Bake Off where they mm. see the nutters. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so well, let's get some answers on this. We asked our studio audience, would you rather be served by a machine or a human being? What, what do you think they said? What would you go for? I'd say machine. Human being. OK, uh, I can tell you the answer is 70% of our studio audience would rather be served by a human being. Thank you. Point point <laughs> OK, Sean Steen, what do you like the look of? Uh, I like the look of a crying woman. <laughs> <laughs> this week, a man was jailed after forgetting to book his wedding venue and phoning in a hoax bomb threat to try and cover it up. <laughs> It's a brilliant story. So we asked our studio audience, have you ever lied to get out of an awkward situation, yes or no? I love that story. It's a great story, isn't it? It's you incredible. Must have Did yeah. you have it on the news? Um, we, we didn't have it on the news, but, um, but it was a fantastic story. We should have had it on the news. But I thought it was a bit harsh. What, that he got prison time but he got that? prison time Because I There's thought, well, I understand that. I would have done that. It's not a bomb hoax, though. <laughs> you say that's OK to do bomb hoaxes because you've messed up. No, I think it's quite right. He got. I, I personally think, think he's so stupid he won't even know where he is. <laughs> <laughs> you probably think it's just a really long, tedious honeymoon. <laughs> what I like the idea of is, is that the ideas that he rejected. He had a list of ideas <laughs> like triffids, no, <laughs> Vikings, <Ooh. laughs> lava from a volcano. <laughs> he went bomb hoax. <laughs> okay, I've got a question for you, Joe. If you were getting married, right, to a lovely lady. Hey? Right? No. <laughs> Bear with me on this. If you were getting married to a lovely lady and you've forgotten to book the venue, I can't imagine you not being very organised, but imagine a scenario where you've forgotten to book the venue, what would you do in that situation? Hire a sniper rifle. <laughs> Hire one? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> not made of money. Sniper. <laughs> and that's what that bit at the end of the page goes, sniper rifle, hire. <laughs> oh, it's a gap in the market thinking about it. <laughs> Or I would, uh, I would just say the venue's double booked. <laughs> that would have been a better idea, wouldn't yeah. it? The venue's fucked up, they're double yeah, booked. Yeah, yeah, Just don't ask him. Do you, if you love me, you'll trust me. <laughs> <laughs> OK, have you ever lied to get out of an awkward situation? John? I'd love to answer that question, but I, uh, my, uh, my nan's... I've got to go and... Um, <laughs> uh... You've got a date with your nan? <laughs> I've had plenty of times I wish I'd lied, mm. where honesty is not the best policy, where you just don't want to see someone and you can't think of a lie quick enough. It's like, oh, do you fancy coming out for a drink? And you go, no. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Yeah, you could have sugared that pill a little bit. <laughs> OK, do you think our audience have ever lied to get out of an awkward situation? Yeah, yeah everyone has. My dog farted recently, and to, uh, <laughs> to cover up the embarrassment, I said I'd shat myself. <laughs> OK, yeah. um, so let's get some odds on this, so, uh, yes or no? Yes. 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 OK, I can tell you the answer is yes. 93% of our studio audience have lied to get out of an awkward situation. <laughs> In 
things get out of hand so quickly. I once heard of a girl who lied to her husband about how she got pregnant, and now there's an entire religion. So, at the end of that round, it's five points for Sean's team and three points for John's team. <laughs> and the winner is, is the name of our final round. Here's your question. Hardest job? How much is working in a sour cream factory? <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, checking that it's, it's... it's off, but not too off. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh, yeah, that's all right. <laughs> 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 I think the hardest job must be the little man who has to sit inside the ATM and push all the money out. <laughs> <laughs> hardest job? What do you think the hardest job is, Tess? One of my hardest jobs was doing uh, live kids' television and not swearing. Every time a kid kicked you or vomited on you or, you know, we had, a, we had one football game, eat my goal, and off, you, you get slammed in the face with a football live television. <laughs> like, shh, no! <laughs> I used to work on a stud farm. Uh, as a tour guide. Oh, <laughs> for a second now, I thought that is the worst job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <right>. No, that's... <laughs> that's what they have to do. There's the, the penis cleaner. <laughs> there's the, there's the, the person who has to guide the horse penis into the, into the mare. So that's a tough that's, one as well. And was that... I mean, did you know the person that did that job? What job did you have He didn't to do it to me. He did it to the mare. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying, did, you, did you do that? Did you do that? I had to bring American tourists around while they while they watch this. <laughs> John, what do you think the hardest job is? I imagine Alex Ferguson's wife is having a tough time of it at the moment. <laughs> he's pretty much had 30 years where he's never in, and now he's just sat on their couch like it's <laughs> the bench at Old Trafford. Switch it, switch it. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to change the channel, Alex, you can do it yourself. <laughs> all over their living room floor. <laughs> is it Head of Wasps at London Zoo? It's <laughs> a thankless task, isn't it? I'm Head of Wasps. Feeding time's easy, you just empty a bin in the cage. <laughs> is it Head of Wasps? It's not Head of Wasps, no. Daily Mail reggae correspondent. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Head of Reggae at the Daily Mail. <laughs> no? <laughs> The company that makes Jim will fix it badges are struggling. <laughs> Is it police nurse? They're both difficult jobs. Imagine if you had to do two of them at once. <laughs> police nurse. The police nurse. Police... <laughs> To hear police, but da 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 da. Oh, you're not feeling very well. Police nurse. <laughs> police nurse, mum. <laughs> You're saying mother's most difficult job in the world, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it is. Sean, take that back. Yeah, rather than welding on a North Sea oil rig. <laughs> you get a lunch break on a North Sea oil rig, don't you? Don't get a break if you're a mother, though, Sean. Yes, you do. It's just a, oh, it's a whole job's one long tea break. It's just a long tea break. <laughs> have you stayed at home all day with a small child? Yes, I have, yeah. Yeah. Have you fed it from your boobs? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it's quite an easy one to get. It's regarded as a very difficult job. Teacher. That's the right answer. Yes, the hardest job is a teacher. All the teachers at my school were very strict. I remember every Monday morning I had to give the deputy head. <laughs> <laughs> well, that sound tells me it's the end of the round and the end of the show, which means the final scores are John, Tess and Ashling have three points, Sean, Joe and Christian are the winners with six points. Oh. Thanks to all our panellists, our wonderful studio audience, and to all of you for watching. That's it from us. Good night. Hi, I'm Jimmy Carr, the guy you just saw in that video. Thanks for watching it, because uh, somehow I get money from that. I, I don't know how. I don't, I don't know. Thanks for watching it, and somehow that benefits me. And hopefully I'll see a live show at some point further down the sunny road. Good luck.